Should we get some t-shirts too, Nikon? I would. I love handing out stuff. Here you go. Are you sure? Yeah. This is heavy. Eh. Can you do it? Look at me. I can't do this without her. That's Miss Nikon. So She's when I first started to play chess, I was very young and I always tell my students this, this really fun sort of, sort of story and it has a lot of little funny moments. My brother wanted to learn how to play chess and he was six years old and I was two years younger than him. So how old was I? And then the, all the kids would say, four years old. And then I would say, very good. And then I would say, you know, but I wanted to learn how to play chess too. And my dad said, you're too young to learn. And I would, you know, run around and say, woo hoo hoo. And I would cry like, and all the kids start to laugh. And then I tell them the truth, which is my uncle Ben is actually the one that taught me how to move the pieces. And he came to me and he would ask me, you know, what's the matter? And I said, I want to learn how to play chess. And so at a very young age, he actually introduced me to chess. The fact is, it's, it's a good way to let the kids know, look, it doesn't matter if you're tall or short. It doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl. And it doesn't matter if you're four or 400 years old. And I always say this and the kids all start to laugh. And it's the reality of it. You know, you can have a six-year-old kid that can absolutely crush a 30-year-old adult. Uh, you can have an eight-year-old that can beat a 14-year-old. You can have a 14-year-old that will beat a 25-year-old. Age is really not a factor. It's really a skill thing. But you, you've got to play with me, though. You can't just get it. You have to play with me first. Look, the, the fact is, is that most students that take chess lessons, they don't become world champions, and they shouldn't want to be. They should want to follow chess. And look, if you want to be a world champion, that's phenomenal. And we'll help you with every step of that. And we'll, we'll try to coach you as best as humanly possible. But that's something that you should want. Not that mom and dad should want or anyone else should want. You should want that. And if that's something that you truly want today, you're eight years old. You might not want that when you're 14. You might not want that when you're 12. You might not want that next week. You know, for our job as a teacher, as an educator is to take every good thing that we can possibly find in that particular area that we're teaching, whether it's math or history, geography, general activities, chess, whatever we're doing, that we're encouraging every facet of the student's life that we possibly can get to. Here you are. These are the chess of Mr. Asangasu. I'm going to put everything over here. I'm going to yeah. get it all set up. I found uh, even this for you too. That's amazing. So wherever you Every go. student that comes here and plays, if they win or lose, they get a prize. Okay. Great. Okay? Yeah, and they get a whole bunch of goodies. Yeah. I love helping my students through this. Is when they're a tough cookie, you know, they're a really good player and they lose a game and they, you know, you can see that it's hurting them and that they're really trying hard and they, and they really want to show Mr. S how tough they are. And they want to show me how, you know, and they, all, of our, all of our other teachers, they want to show how, you know, no, I didn't cry. So what they'll do is they'll put up their eyes like this and roll the tear right back in their eye. And I can see it, you know, and of course it's, it, you know, it, it's a little, it, it's heartbreaking in one way, but it's very endearing in another way. And it's very motivating for me because I know I'm doing something right. They're loving the game enough that it stings just a little bit when they lose. That's okay. Not enough that they're breaking down and having a meltdown. Uh, they're not just shrugging it off their shoulders like it's nothing. They want to improve. So after, after a little bit of this and then they put some water on their face, they come back and they want to know what they did wrong so that they can work on that and not do it again for the next game. This is important. It shows progress. It shows growth. It shows maturity. If you go here, checkmate. If you go here, checkmate in two. That's one of the big things when you see kids are, you know, they're staring at the board, but they're not, the wheels aren't turning. They're not really thinking. They're not critically analyzing anything you're saying. They just don't want to get in trouble, so they keep their eyes on the big board. But, you know, as a teacher, you need to know the difference. You need to catch that, monitor that, improve that, help them understand, give them a simple question so that they can, you know, it's incredible. The same student that's doing nothing and just staring at the board and not thinking about a thing. If you get, get that same student to answer a very easy question, immediately they've gained one, one hurdle they've overcome, one bit of a, of a question that they were able to answer. Now they feel confident. What is this? What is this move? I'm angry at this move. Why is this move coming around me? You know I can check you right now really badly. I'm gonna do check and check. What we try to do is we try to encourage them to answer questions. And even if their answers are wrong, as long as they're staying within the line of thinking that we're, we're asking them to do. So for example, when we ask them, find a way to capture back, 
find a fork, find a tactic here, find a pin, find a discovered attack, find a skewer, find a double check, find a decoy, find, you know, a sacrifice. Find these different things. As long as you're staying within that line of thinking and as long as you're sticking to that, we'll reward that. Even if it's incorrect, it's okay. We need you to build your confidence and we need to help that. So if they're, if, if, you're passionate about it, they can feel that excitement, they can feel your energy, and if they're excited, then I'm excited and I don't need as much coffee. You're a big bully, I'm not scared of bullies. You're attacking me? Okay, let me see big bully, Do I, am I scared? Am I scared of big bullies? I'm not scared of big bullies, I'm coming for you big bully. Parents have less and less, you know, as I'm getting older, I'm, I'm understanding uh, this a lot more that it's, tricky to relate with certain students that love you know Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh and Beyblades and at this point those things are obsolete there are all these new things that they all love and uh, it's tough to keep up with that and the beautiful thing about chess is that it's such a universal game it's such a it's a game really that connects people in my opinion and you can speak it across languages and across countries and across the world favorite things I, I hear from students is hey Mr. S do you know what the Halloween gambit is Hey, Mr. S, do you know what the Danish gambit is? Mr. S, I know something called the Evans gambit. And I love hearing that kind of stuff because not only do we teach those concepts and those openings, but they're just fun for the kids and it shows me that the kids are now starting to look at things on their own time, which is really enjoyable for us because now we've given them the joy of chess. We've given them this gift of chess and they've given us the gift of giving them that. And that's a joy for both of us. We try to make sure that the students understand that they have a responsibility they are the emperor or the empress, and their pieces are their minions. Their minions have to do whatever they say. You're taking, he's taking the first move back. He's not sure about the first move yet. This is not the time where you have to think very deep. First move is easy. But as the emperor or empress, you have a responsibility to your pieces. They're counting on you. They're counting on you to make the right decisions. You're going to make some wrong ones. That's just normal. But if you don't learn from it, then you haven't gained anything. So the key is from the very beginning, you begin to understand what's this all about. Learning, growing, having fun. We want our students to become more than just good chess players. We want them to become very strong, independent young adults. And in our years of doing this, we've seen that time and again. And we're proud of the success that we've had with all of our students. We're proud of the involvement that we've had with so many different families. We look at each individual student and we see how can we impact this student's life positively for this day. How will that impact their life better in the future? What can we do to make them gradually a better person? What can we do to help them through any kind of difficulties that they have? How do we make them stronger? How do we make them more confident? These are the things that we try to do at our school and establish this for our students' futures because that their future becomes our future. So it's all intertwined, we're all connected in this way.